people really don't want to hear it, do they? Get happy and then all of your troubles will go away. Like, I don't know that, they say. Yes. I feel amazing today. It's great to be up here. I've been curious about a couple of things. Um, can you talk to us about angels and spirit guides? Well, there are a lot of different names and labels that you give in your attempt to explain your interpretation of non-physical. What specifically are you wanting from us? How do angels or spirit guides work? Are they real? How do we experience them? How, how do we call on them? Well, it's a big question because a lot of different people use those labels and mean somewhat different things by them. But in essence, what you're asking about, you are extensions of source energy. And so, of course, all of that is real. In other words, as Esther is allowing us to visit with you as she translates, we're offering radio signals or blocks of thought that are like radio signals and she's translating them. And there are people who, when they receive those blocks of thoughts or radio signals, can translate visually. Esther is translating verbally. And so the non-physical is interacting with you in many different ways. And depending upon the intensity of your desire to know and your ability to allow in any given moment is what makes for the variety of experiences that different people are having. Esther said to us one night early on in her new relationship with us consciously, Abraham, I want to see you. And we said, we don't think you really do because we had seen her lying in her bed with her eyes closed, afraid that she might see us. She was beginning to develop a very nice relationship with us and she didn't want anything weird to happen that would upset her in any way. And so she said, no, really, Abraham, I do want to see you. And we said, then open your eyes. It was a very dark bedroom out under a Texas sky. Jerry was sound asleep and Esther opened her eyes and she saw a room full of fireflies, what looked like millions of fireflies, too many to count. And then all of the fireflies gathered together in one corner, emitting a light that was so bright that Esther could not look into it. And then the bright light dispersed into several lights around the room, not millions and not one bright light, but several lights around the room that Esther could behold. And then she said, I see that you are energy. And we said, this is your visual translation of that which we are. And it is the most accurate translation that Esther and her practical mindedness could find because it was the translation in the way that we were projecting it. In other words, we want Esther to understand that we are energy. There are those who want their spirit guide or their non-physical energy stream to be translated to them in ways that match the stories that they've been told. One day, early and also in Jerry and Esther's experience, they did a radio broadcast in Dallas, Texas. And one of the women who heard the broadcast came to the first meeting and later became a very good friend with Jerry and Esther. And she later told them that at that first meeting or on that way to that meeting, she had said, all right, Abraham, whoever you are, are you good or evil? which sort of gives you an idea of where she was at at that time. She did not yet know what we had to say and she was not sure how it all uh, broke down into physical terminology. And so as the meeting unfolded, Esther remembers Abraham sitting in a chair and opening her eyes and then pausing in silence for what felt to Esther like a very long time. And then the meeting got underway and the questions and answers began. And a few weeks later, once Jerry and Esther became very good friends with this dear woman, she told them about her story, about how she had quizzed us on her way to the meeting, and that when Esther, Abraham, opened their eyes, that the room filled with wings of angels. And so we were offering a block of thought to this woman who was asking this intense question, a woman who was able to interpret visually on many occasions, and her interpretation gave her the answer that she was looking for, you see. And so we want to say to you in a soft way that it is in the eye of the beholder in the sense that everyone has the ability to interact with non-physical, but you cannot interact apart from the beliefs you already hold. Right. 
So sometimes in the beginning, what you will receive in terms of what you see or even what you hear will match the belief system that you hold. And in time, as you get more in sync with who you are and you're able to relax and release some of the folklore that you've picked up along your physical trail, then you can begin to have more of your own authentic experience. But we want to say to you, one who sees light in a room or fireflies in a room is not more accurate than one who sees a room filled with angels' wings mm -hmm. or angels. In other words, you get to interpret this in whatever way that you want to. It is offered to you purely, but you are the interpreter of it. And so you make it what it is. And so over time, it is extraordinary the amount of stories that physical man tells about his interaction with non-physical. We would call all of it real. We would call all of it valid. And then we would say, if we were standing in your physical shoes, in what way do I want to interact? Esther was not coming from a religious basis. And she did not want any distortion whatsoever. She was the purest slate that we had seen in that she had not come to any conclusions of her own that would prohibit her from being able to receive clearly what we were offering. And so as Esther finds words, they are always words that match the intention that we are offering. And then over time, as we offer words and Esther depicts our meaning with words and we are able to feel your response to her words and then we are able to feel your vibration in response to her words. Over time, we have literally created a language that depicts purely the intent of Abraham. But that does not mean that it is the only language that is authentic. There are many ways of interpreting non-physical. I read a book a couple months ago and I loved the book. Um, it was by a woman named Lynn Grabhorn, Excuse Me, Your Life is Waiting, and it was based on your teachings, and it was just said in a very powerful way. So then I picked up her next book, which was very disturbing to me. Um, she talked about the others, and um, I was wondering if that is just her disturbed perception, uh, or if such um, malevolent uh, beings exist? Well, we'll begin by saying to you that there is only a stream of well-being and that that which is non-physical is of that stream. Mm -hmm. But we also say to you that every thought that has ever been thought still exists. And so as the spin-off of man's conscious mind continues, experience after experience, century after century, there's a lot of thought data that is there. In your lifetime, the movie industry has added dramatically to the way man spins his thoughts around the subject. The religions, uh, the information that is coming from the pulpit, so much more information about the devil and evil than about good and God. And so if you talk to little children who go to church, often they will tell you more about the devil than they will about God. It gets their attention more. It is something more to worry about, you see. And so what we notice is that in your environment where contrast helps you to identify what is wanted, sometimes humans get a little uh, bent on pushing against the part they don't want and they don't get tuned quick enough to the new idea that is coming out of the contrast. And so there is a lot of thought, but all of it coming from man's conscious mind. People said to Esther in the beginning, Esther, aren't you afraid as you begin to receive Abraham? And by the time she began receiving those questions, there was no fear within her at all. She had come to sense who we were. She could feel who we were. She knew that there was no sense of possession because any time the telephone would ring while Jerry was having a chat with us, we would release her immediately. Esther could feel that we were, they were, that we were there in response to their request, that we were not asserting ourselves into their experience in any way, that they were asking and that we were answering and so Esther was not in a place of fear at all and then people would say don't you need to protect yourself in some way and as Esther heard more and more of them saying that she began asking us about that and we said it's just like saying if I set my radio dial on 630 do I need to worry about getting something from all of the other stations and the answer is no when you set your tuner law of attraction is going to bring you that which is a vibrational match to the signal that you yourself are set at you see and so 
Lynn Grabhorn was a woman, a wonderful woman, who came to many of Jerry and Esther's gatherings. She came to them one day, wanted to have lunch with them, and explained to them that she was going to write a book and that she was going to base it on what Abraham had to say. And she also said, and I'm not going to tell anyone where I'm getting the material because I think there are people out there that are very afraid of this kind of thing. And Esther and Jerry said, well, anyone is free to use our material. We are not keeping it a secret. We want people to understand that they create their own reality. But it would be ever so nice if you would let people know where you got the information so that if they want to go further with it, mm -hmm. then they will be able to find the source of it. And now Esther can see, as she gets feedback from the second book, that this woman, this dear woman, was fearful of many things prior to coming to Jerry and Esther. And clearly there was that which was still active in her vibration. She was not the receiver of the material. She was the mimicker of the mm -hmm. material. Everything that is written in her book, she transcribed from one of the recordings, you see. And so she was reaching for that feeling of well-being, but she had never really found it herself. And so there are many reasons that people are attracting what they are attracting. But it is our absolute promise to you that there is not some source of evil being out there that has the ability to assert itself in your experience. But you get what you think about and it will come to you, it will find a way to manifest, you see. The best way of describing this that we can, that will give you a sense of all of this, was one day we were visiting with a woman who lived in the San Francisco area. And she said, Abraham, I've been crossing these big bay bridges for many, many years, and I have never felt any fear about it at all. And recently, as I'm crossing these bridges, I am having what I must describe as panic attacks. She said, I want to lie on the floor of my car. My fear is so intense. What's happening with me? And we said, you must be bumping into some thought forms on the bridge. Well, she didn't like the sense of that at all. In other words, there are thought forms on the bridge. She said, whatever do you mean? And we said, well, you have to understand that everything that everyone thinks about is broadcast for everyone else to pick up if they are in the vibrational vicinity. And so people have been crossing these bridges. Often they're tourists and it's a sort of precarious feeling. Often they're in a monster bus like Jerry and Esther's and it's an even more precarious feeling because of the, the width of the lanes and going through the toll booths. There had recently been earthquakes and some of the bridges had fallen down, which had increased people's concern about being on a bridge, maybe at a time of another earthquake. And we said, so all of these people are offering all of these thoughts and these thoughts are being broadcast around the vicinity of this and law of attraction is causing a coalescing of these. So there is thought and then there is thought that is thought upon longer and there, the these thoughts have come into thought form. But we said, they've been there when you have crossed the bridge all of the days that you've crossed the bridge. We said, the question is not where are the thought forms coming from or why are the thought forms there? We said, the question to ask is, why are you now picking up on these thought forms when you never have before? What's been going on in your experience that is making you a vibrational receiver of this? She knew right away. She said, my neighbor was burglarized. And it made me feel very vulnerable. I've been going to meetings. We're organizing a neighborhood watch system. I called someone to come to put an alarm system in my house. I'm considering even putting bars in my house. And so something not even related to the bridge, but related to a feeling of insecurity had been activated within her, which brought her into vibrational range of something that she had never been in vibrational range of before, you see. So we want you to understand that there are not big bad things out there that are of a supernatural nature. You do a plenty good job of creating the things that you do not want in your reality just by focusing on sickness and cancer and burglaries and terrorism. <laughs> in other words, don't bring them from outer space. We promise you they are not coming. But whatever it is that you are giving your attention to is that which you will have an experience about. And that was nothing more than a creation of this woman based upon the vibrational balance of her being. Thank you for clarifying that. I didn't really think that her second book was uh, an accurate... Uh, oh, it's thing. accurate. It's an accurate depiction of where she was she at the was. time that she received it. But it's not it. anything that the rest of us need to worry about. Well, you about. see, this is the reason that we want you to realize that you create your own reality. In other words, there are all kinds of influences out there. As you watch television and they point out to you that one out of every five has it and you're probably the one, and then they list that long stream of symptoms and then they encourage you to eat that stuff and then they tell you the side effects that that stuff will give you. In other words, you can't listen to anything without an active 
activation. But that's why we want you to relax and understand that you have this wonderful buffer of time and that the basis of your life is one of well-being. And that when you read something and it makes you feel uneasy, utilize your own guidance system and understand that the reason it feels uneasy is because it is not a vibrational match to who you are, a vibrational match.